Welcome to the first lab of Betacom. And in this lab, we will be learning more about network command and services. So let's jump right in. So we want to try out a few network commands and the first one is IP config. Exactly what you have learned in the yesterday lectures. So okay, now let I'll give you one example first. Let's say today you have one PC, okay? That PC doesn't belong to you, lah. It belongs to your friend or someone else that you don't know. Now you want to know what is the IP address of the PC. You know, uh, you have learned in the lecture class. You can use the command IP config, right? So in this case, ah, uh, later on you will use the command prompt to find out what is the IP address of your machine. So every one of you here, later on you will get different IP address. Okay, I need you to check your IP address and then you tell me in the chat what is your IP address. Now, why your IP address is different? That's because um, you are using your own network. Everybody here is in your own network. Some of you are using mobile data. Some of you are using unified network. Now, that IP address that you have right now is given by the router of your network. Okay, so it can change from time to time or it could be the same all the time, depending on how you set the router up. So right now I will show you how I do this first, and then you can do this on your own. So for your case, you need to open the command prompt here. Okay, how do you open command prompt? You can just follow step number one here. Okay, I cannot show you command prompt because I'm using a Mac machine, so I will use the Mac version of command prompt, which is the terminal here. So once you have the command prompt up, you can type ip config. And then you can see all your IP uh, IP information. Okay, now for your case, you type IP config. Because I'm using a Mac, I will type IP config. Okay, so that's a little something that you can know extra stuff that you should know lah. Windows and Mac, the command is a little bit different. So I'm using a Mac, or if you're using a Linux machine, you use IP config. If you're using a Windows 10 or Windows 8, use IP config. You press enter, you should see a lot of information. Okay, so what you are seeing here on the screen right now is actually uh, the network information or we call this IP configuration. Okay, so I will explain this one using the example in the lab manual so that everybody sees the same thing. Okay, uh? so before I explain, can I know anybody have any errors while you try to do this? Anybody cannot see this screen? You should see this screen here. Okay, once you type IP config, you should see this. So let's say in the exam, okay, in the exam you are given uh, something like this, and then we ask you what is the IP address of this machine. So this is very easy. Like I said in the lecture class, we only focus on IPv4, so you don't care about any IPv6 stuff here, lah. Okay, ah. So IPv4 address is given here. For my case. I am 192.168.0.110. This is a dynamic IP given by the router. Okay, so I will just ask one of you here. I will pick your name and then you will tell me what is your IP address. Uh, our friend he is having IP 192.168.204.1. So maybe uh, this is a network that he's in. Okay, and for your case, of course, it is different lah. So uh, exercise one is very simple. IP config allow us to know. What uh, allow us to know more about your IP configurations? Okay. Now the second thing that you should remember is this default gateway. Uh, this is also important. Uh. so default gateway is the router. Remember, I said that for every network, you need to have at least one router. Without router, you cannot go to the internet. So for my router, for my network here, I'm in Utah campus. So this is my router IP address 192.168.0.1 Okay, so you again everybody here will have different router IP So uh, can can you tell us what is your IP address for your router Li Hao? A friend here Li Hao is showing us this IP for his router This one is an IPv6 address, okay? Now it, uh, as you know, there are two kinds of address, IPv4 and V6. Okay, so you should answer IPv4. Yeah, that's correct. So thank you, Li Hao. Uh, so you see, uh, Li Hao router is 192.168.1.1. 
which is definitely correct because most of the time uh, if you check on your site your IP address for router is dot one okay so router IP either we start with the first IP or the last IP so in some case you will see 1.254 254 is the last address one is the first address so either the first one or the last one is okay okay so IP config is very simple what you need to know is that you need to know how to find your current IPv4 address and your current router IP okay count down 5 4 3 2 1 now go to exercise 2 okay before you can do exercise 2 all of you need to get your eager server IP address okay I'll explain this one slowly uh. In exercise 2, we want to try to ping someone. So the ping command is used to check if you can talk to somebody. Okay. So scientifically, we call this uh, whether it is reachable. So you see uh, on the network, you have many hosts. You can have PC, mobile phone, laptop, smart TV, smart anything. Okay. But some of the time, you the first thing for you to get online or to talk to anyone is of course you need to have one IP before address okay on computer network how do we know that we can talk to someone so for example in Utah right right now I'm in the lecture lecturer rooms so over here we have 50 lecturers in FICT now I want to know whether my neighbor today my neighbor is here whether he have turned on the PC so one of the thing I can do is I can ping his IP address so we call this the destination IP okay the one that I'm trying to pick is the destination IP so you see uh, on the lab manual here okay, uh, try to look at the lab manual here when we try to ping someone the command we use is ping followed by the destination IP address and you will get a reply so if the if you get a reply it means that the ping is successful which also means the one that you are trying to talk to is replying to you you can talk to him okay another thing that can happen is when you try to ping someone you do not get any reply that means that the person that you are trying to talk to is not reachable at the moment okay there can be many reasons now, but you just think that it's either success or not successful so if it is not successful you uh, sometimes you might get a request time out or sometimes you might guess destination post are reachable okay so that's ping now in this lab here you're going to ping the eager server ip okay so eager server i'm sure that before you've done uh, in the pre-lab you have already set up eager server so the whole point of eager server is you want to do the whole lab one on eager server okay eager server is just like any server like you think uh, if you play if you go to facebook then you talk to facebook server if you browse instagram story you are talking to instagram server so eager server is just another kind of server that we set up so that we can run this lab okay so right now the first thing you have to find out what is your eager server ip address okay how do you find out your eager server ip you need to go back to the first lab manual the pre-labs okay go to exercise number go a little bit down further step up okay so this is where you find your eager server ip so I need you to, I give you one minute to do this. I need everyone here to go back to your eager server. If it is not running yet, please start it up. And throughout the lab, don't turn the eager server off. Huh? Your eager server has to be always running in the background for you to do that one, okay? Now, if your eager server is already up, go to the console and then type this command, sdifconfig. You will get your eager server IP address. So in my example, my IP is 192.168.200.128 Of course, your IP address or for eager server will be different depending on what IP your router give lah. Okay, now exercise 2 is actually for you to try to ping eager server only Okay, now how to ping is very simple lah. You use command prompt and then you type the ping command So you look at my command prompt here lah. Wait, wait, let me clear the screen first Okay, so you just type ping and then you type your eager server IP. Now you don't follow my IP uh, because my IP is different. You follow the one that you just find out. My IP is 68.127. Okay, now if your eager server is running, you should get a reply. Something like what you are seeing here. 
This means that my eager server is replying to me. It's reachable. Okay. Now, uh, for your case, you should see something like this in the lab manual. You will get four reply because if you are using Windows, then you only ping four times. Okay. Every second, you will send one ICMP. One, two, three, four. So you get four reply. For my case, I'm using a Mac. So this on the Mac, uh, the ping is unlimited. One, you see, uh, it cannot stop one. You, know. you keep ping one until you stop it manually. Okay. So you see, uh, what we are doing now here is ping. Uh, is try to check whether we can go to the destination or not. So when I ping google.com, it means what? It means that Google is talking back to me. Which also means that if I go to a web browser now, if I type google.com, then I can see Google web page. Okay? So you see, uh, if one day, one day you go to google.com, you cannot, go, cannot open Google, then what you can do is actually you try to ping. If you try to ping google.com, if you cannot get a reply, that means Google is down. But that is, that is definitely not going to happen. Uh. So ZenMap and NMap, you will, you will hear these two names quite often. Lah. So NMap and ZenMap is actually the same thing. Okay, They are port scanning tool. NMap is the command line version and the ZenMap is the UI version. Okay, So if you are the person who like to use a keyboard, you use NMap. If you are the kind of person who like to click, 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 then you use ZenMap. Okay, it's the same thing. Lah. Okay, uh, you should see the I logo. Uh. The I means that I'm looking at you, I can see you. So that's ZenMap here. What we are trying to do here is we want to use ZenMap to scan and to find out what services is running. So the concept is like this. Try to think about this, uh, this thing as a server. Okay, so let's say this thing is a server. Now, you should know that a server can be any device that can connect to the network. Okay. We have this misconception that a server has to be something very big, uh, uh, it's a few stories tall, that is a server. Actually, it's not. Anything can be a server. Okay? As long as you are having a service running, you're providing services to any device or to any client, that is a server. So, a uh, thing like this, this one can be a server. It can be a web server, it can be a data server, it can be a game server, okay? The, another thing you should know is that uh, a physical server unit can be many different kinds of server. So it doesn't mean that if this one is a web server, then it is only web server. No. This thing, it can be a web server, it can also be a DHCP server, it can also be a DNS server at the same time. Let's say I ask you a question. What is this Pokemon? Okay, I want to know what is this Pokemon? What is this server? Is this a web server or is this a game server? How can we do so? Now, we can do that using uh, nmap or zenmap, okay? You go to zenmap, of course, you need to have the server IP address. And this IP address is your eager server IP, okay? And you, are, you will have to put the eager server IP into this place, your target here, okay? So for my case, my IP is 192.168.68.127. Okay, you don't follow my IP. You have to put in your own eager server IP address here. Okay. Now the next thing that you should configure is here on the profile. So the place where you, you on N NMAP or ZMAP, you can do many different kinds of scanning. You can do port scanning, ping scan, different kind of scan. So right now, because we want to know what server this is, we need to find out what are the services that is running inside here. Okay, so later on, after we scan, you will see a list of open ports and we will guess from the result later. I will show you how. Now, for now, you have to choose on intense scan and then you click on the scan button. Okay, so just do this and then you wait for a while. After a while, you will see a list of results that shows you all the open ports. Okay, guys, now let's go to your nmap output here. Okay. Uh, you should see something like this, okay? If you do not see this one, means that your scan is not successful. Uh. What you are seeing on the screen is a list of open ports, okay? So you should know that um, in computer network, uh, we have many programs, right? 
So on your phone, you have Facebook, you have Instagram, you have WeChat. So all these programs, they have a number. Okay, this number is used to identify what program that you are using on the network. And we call this the port number. Okay, it is called port number. Port na, tubang na. So why is this number important? Because on your device, there are too many applications. So how can we know that right now you are using WhatsApp or right now you are using Facebook Messenger? You, the PC will look at this port number. Okay. Now the next thing you should know about port number is there are two kind of port numbers. Lah. There are well-known ports. There are also random ports. So, now well-known ports are is the number starting from one until one zero two three. Those are well-known ports. Now this number we reserve for popular application, which is why it is called well-known now. Okay, famous mark. So this number uh, it won't change right? For example, if we talk about a web service, we know that web service is running on HTTP, okay? The hypertext transfer protocol. That is running on port 80. So every time you see a port 80, it represents a web service, a web server. That number cannot change right? If you change that number, the whole internet got problem. Okay? Now why uh? because in website uh, everybody go to Google every day. So well known, it's very popular. So we keep port number 80 for HTTP. Now later on, you will also learn about FTP. You will also learn about Telnet and SSH. Those application is also very popular one. So they also have their own number, cannot change one. Okay. How about random ports? Ah? Now if you play Wangzhe, okay, or you play Dota 2, or you play any games, those games, is not very popular because not everybody play one. That that kind of game is using random ports. Okay? Which means that the number can change one, you know. Today uh, if you play Wang Zhe, you are talking to the Wang Zhe server. Today it could be using 123 number. Tomorrow it could be 456. It is always changing. Okay, so that is port number. With that, we know that if every application you have one number, that means that if I know the number, I can guess what you are running, correct or not? So for example here, just now you scan Eagle Server, so think of this as Eagle Server. You scan the Eagle Server, you get this output here, all this output. So what happened is that your PC is sending a lot of TCP freeway handshake, okay, to this Eagle Server. Don't have to worry about that first, just think that your PC is asking the server, tell me what port that you open. If you open port number one, tell me it is open. If you open port number two, tell me it is open. Okay, so we want to ask the server all the ports that are open. The server will reply. So that's why you get all this reply here. Do you see all this reply? So it means that on this eager server here, these are all the ports that are currently open. 139, 443, 143, port 80. Okay, so you see ah, Nmap do what for us? It allow us to scan this server and after the scan, we can know what are all the open ports. So what can we do from this output? We can start to guess. Maybe this is the web server. Do you think I'm right? Okay, you see ah, port 80. Just now I say port 80 is keep, we keep this for web service. So if this is open here, means what? This is a web server, lo. right now. Now if you see ah, port 22 or 23 here so 22 is SSH you will learn about this later 23 is uh, is Telnet so that means what this is a SSH server no? this is also a Telnet server so this is what we are doing here with ZenMap or NMap you can scan a target host and then you can see what are the open ports from the result we can start to guess what server this is and then you solve the mystery Okay, now I think you should see something like this lah, because you are running on Windows, so you should see something like this. And you can also see what is the service name. So for example, you see port 21 is open. So this is an FTP server. Lo. Port 22 is open. This is SSH server. Lo. So from this result here that you see here, you can know what is the serve, what the server is about. Okay. Now you can also scan your friend on you know. If you scan your friend, uh, you see some port that is open, then you can know. 
uh, my friend is currently watching Netflix. My friend is currently playing Wangzhe. We are now in exercise 4 and what we want to do now is we want to browse to the website on Eagle server. So this is continuing from exercise 3. Remember in exercise 3, we try to scan the Eagle server and then from the scan result, we know that Eagle server is actually a web server because we see port 80 is open here, right? In that case, that means if I want to see the website inside the Eagle server, I can just use a web browser and then I type in the Eagle server IP address. Okay, so this is how I'm going to do it. You open any web browser of your choice, Google Chrome, Edge or anything, go to the address bar type in your eager server IP. So for my case, it's 68.127. Press enter. See, that is the website inside eager server IP. Now you can try this on your own. Okay, go to any web browser, type in eager server IP. If everything is working, you should see welcome to eager server. Okay, so this is the website. Huh? And this website, I put it inside eager server. Okay. Now, the next thing I want you to know is that there are two ways for us to browse a website. What we have done here is we use the IP address directly. Okay, this is the Eagle Server IP. With that IP, when I type in a browser, automatically this is default to HTTP because the web browser. Then you see the website. But normally, yeah, we don't do this lah because remember, if you want to go to google.com, you don't type number, you type google.com. Right? So that's what we have been doing all this time. So that means that there are actually two ways for you to browse a website. You can either use the name, the URL, we call this a domain name, or you can either use the IP address directly. But for you to do so, you need to know what is the IP address of the server. Lah. Now, if I want to go to Apple website, I type Apple, oh, this is using the URL. Okay, that is what we have been doing. Now, another way you can do this is by using the IP address of the server directly. Okay, yeah. so it means that when you use this web address, like what we learned in the lecture class, you are using the domain name service, the DNS service. Okay, but if you feel like a pro, you don't want to use DNS, you can just type the IP address of the server directly. You will still get to the same uh, website one. So I will show you one example. You can follow if you want. Uh. So, if I want to use IP address to go to apple.com, okay? First thing is I need to know what is the IP address of apple.com, okay? Now, we can find out the IP address by using the command ns to help. So, for those who want to try, go to your command prompt, type ns to look up, and then follow by apple.com because you want to go to apple.com. Okay, so see what I do here, huh? nslookup apple.com. After this, I will get the IP address of Apple server. So I have three IP, I will randomly take one. Huh? So 17.142.168.59. You see, huh? now I put in this address to my browser. So I type 17.142.160.59. I go to apple.com, same one. So what you should know is, you can either type apple.com or you can type the IP address of apple.com server directly. Okay guys, uh, now we are in exercise 5 and we will be looking at DHCP server, okay? So uh, DHCP server, like I said earlier, if you want to use, if you want to assign IP address automatically, you will be using DHCP. Now think about this, if I have 100 PC in the lab, okay, all of the PC need an IP address. If I use static IP, I need to, how many times I need to configure IP? 100 times, you know, I have to go to 100 PC, type in 100 different IP address manually. I'm not going to do that, okay, because I'm a lazy person. So a lazy person always find a smart way to do it. So, another way, a smarter way would be for you to use a DHCP server. 
Now, if you DSCP server, you only configure it once. You will also learn about how to configure this in lab two. Now, with once you have the DSCP up and running, it will be giving out IP address to all the machines in the network as they join the network. So you don't have to manually give IP address to any new PC that joins the network anymore. Okay, so that's the DHCP server. Now, for you to find out who is giving IP address to your device that you are streaming from right now, you can use ipconfig slash all. So what you can do is, you go back to command prompt, you type ipconfig slash all, type this command here. So, uh, you, I need all of you to go back to command prompt, try to type this ipconfig and then you should see something like this okay so type this ip config here okay so you get something quite similar to ip config when you type slash all remember there's a space between the, the command uh, otherwise you get an error so you will see some extra information like you can now know who is your dhcp server and who is your dns server now for my case my DHCP server is 201.1. My DNS server is also 201.1. Okay? So now the question is who is the DHCP server in your home network? Okay. So, Achu, are you awake? Achu, tell me what is your DHCP server IP? My one is 201.1. How about yours? We have two friends here, very good friend. They share their DHCP server IP for us. So, this is their DHCP server IP. Okay? So the next thing I want you to check, do you notice that this IP, uh, your DH server IP, is the same with your router IP? Router IP is default gateway. So Arjun, mm -hmm. Arjun tell me what is your DHCP server IP? 1.1, one .1. okay, tell me what is your router IP? See, it's the same. So you see, uh, In most cases, your DHCP server is also your router. Your router is also your DHCP server. This, this means that in your home network, you don't have to buy a PC or a server just to give out IP addresses because the router that TM gives to you, it is already a DHCP server. Okay? Now, in some cases, if you check DNS, it is also the same, you know, but in some cases, it might not be. Now, if you see a uh, DNS is also the router IP, it means that your router is also a DNS server, is also a DHCP server, okay? But for me or for most of the guy, uh, I, I think you know what I mean. Uh. You see the DNS server is 8.8.8.8, .8 .8 .8. it's Google DNS server. Because uh, in Malaysia, uh, a lot of the website that we want to go has been blocked. Uh. So, which is why you cannot use your router. You have to change it to Google DNS server 8.8.8.8. Okay, now FTP is a way for us to transfer file. It is stand, it stand for file transfer protocol. And we only use FTP if you want to download something from a server. Okay, now, first thing. FTP is not the only way you download something. Okay, for example, if today I upload Packet Tracer installer to Google Drive. So when you download, you just go to Google Drive link, you click on the link, the download starts automatically. That is HTTP download. Okay, another way is using FTP. So uh, FTP is used if you want to download large file from a server. Okay, now how do you use FTP? Uh? Uh, actually the same way how you browse a website so first thing you need to know is let's say this is an ftp server okay the eager server is also ftp server i'm not lying uh, you can go here you check here port 20 i think port 21 yeah port 21 is open so this port 21 is for ftp okay cannot change one uh, ftp is port 21 and if you see that, that means eager server is also FTP. So what it means? It means that I can go inside eager server, I download the file from eager server using FTP. Okay? So how can I do so? I can do so using UI or command. Okay? 
In exercise 6, I will show you how to use the UI, which is easy for everyone, I just click. Ma. In exercise 7, I will show you how you type the command, but both are doing the same thing for you, okay? So let's go to uh, a web browser of your choice. For me, I'll open up my Safari here, and then I will type in, okay, so remember just now, uh, on the tab here, I type in the eager server IP. If you press enter, by default, it will show you the website because browser default to HTTP, port AP, okay? Now, in my case here, what I want to do is, I'll be, I want to go to FTP. So what I do is, I will keep the same address, but I'll add FTP in front. So FTP, double colon, slash, slash. If you press enter, it will go to uh, the FTP on Eagle server. Okay, so you see, after you do so, it will ask you for username and password. You type in Cisco, Cisco. Username is Cisco, password is Cisco. Then you should see something like this. And that, that means you are already in. Congratulations. You are already inside here. You can download anything from the web server, uh, from the Eagle server. Okay. The next thing you want to try is try to download this file here. Okay, you try to find this file, find it on your phone, download this file. Okay. Now uh I will show you how to do this on my side, but because I'm using a Mac, so mine is a bit different. Uh. My one, I'm not when I go to FTP, it will actually open up a finder. Okay. So I will try to connect the username is Cisco, password again is Cisco. You click connect. Okay, now you see I'm already in. So this one here is the FTP server. So yours is a bit different because you are on the browser. I'm on the explorer here. Okay, this is the finder in Mac OS. So actually, it's the same thing. Now, what you can do is you can try to download any file from Eagle server. Okay, if I want to download this file, I can just drag and drop this to my desktop. Okay, that is how I download from FTP. Very cool. So what, what this means for you is you can actually put all your file on a server and then you give your IP address of the server to your friend. Now, like assignment data or your assignment report, you can put it on the server. So if you want your friend to download, you give the IP to your friend, they get inside to your server using FTP and then they can download. You don't have to send them WhatsApp thing every time you want to send them something. Just tell them, everything I want you to have is already on my server. Go to my server, you can download from there. Okay guys, so if you have already downloaded, then I want you, the next thing I want you to try is go to your command prompt and you type this command net state dash n or net state dash b. Okay, either one is fine, lah, okay? Uh, over here, I am showing you next state dash B. It, it shows you uh, a little bit more information depending on what you are doing. So, you see, uh, what I have here is when I type this next state command in the command prompt, I am actually checking all the open connections in my local machine. Okay, so you see, uh, this means that my iMac is currently talking to all these destination so all these are another pc all this is eagle server this is my eagle server and then these are the services that i'm using on the eagle server okay so this is very similar to what we seen earlier when we try to scan the eagle server we can know all the ports that are open inside the eagle server okay now next step is the same thing but you do this on your own pc you want to know right now your pc is talking to who if you use a net state, you can see all the connections. This is your own IP. This is my IP address of my iMac. And I'm currently talking to Eagle Server. Okay, in some cases, you will see some, something which is not an IP before address. It, it is the same thing. Because this one, uh, you know, sometimes you can, a web server, you have IP, you can go to a web server using a domain name. So some of the time, if the machine can resolve the IP, then it will show the domain name instead of showing you the IP report address. But actually, this is pointing to some host. Uh. Okay, so you have to understand what this output means. Uh. This one means that my PC is using this port number, client. This is the client port. 
that is talking to the Eagle server at this IP using the FTP service. So why you see this line is because just now we connect to Eagle server FTP and then remember I do this. I download something. So again, uh, for me to download, I just drag and drop. Then I download. So when I do so, I'm actually opening a connection to the Eagle server using FTP. So if you haven't connect to FTP, you type this command, you will not see this line. Okay. Once you connect to Eagle server on FTP, you type the next step command again, you will see this line appear because you are connected using a file transfer protocol. That explains the output on your lab manual here. Okay. So you will see your Eagle server IP followed by port 21. Port 21 is also FTP. So it is the same thing. Lah. Now I answer for Achu. Achu, you already downloaded but you don't have the FTP line. Okay, this is a good news. That means that your internet is very fast. Okay, you see, ah, when you do this next step, your PC will show all the open ports. But if your internet is too fast, uh, when you download the file from the Eagle server to your own PC, before the next state can detect this connection or before it can show this connection, the download has already finished. You completed the download, which is why you don't see an FTP line here. You see, uh, FTP is running on TCP. So that means you open the connection, you download, and then you close it. So if you want to see this line, you have to be very fast. Your hand has to be like uh, a hacker, okay? Immediately you type this, immediately you download, then you will see it. That's another way. You can download a very, very big file that will take very long time. Then, of course, you will always see this one until you finish downloading. Okay? Next one is an FTP command. So what is going on in labs uh, exercise 7 is you use command to go inside FTP. So you see uh, there is nothing for you to click. You can only type. You type all the command here. CD stands for change directory. So you are trying to use the command to get to this folder here to download this file. Okay. So this command here get get is the command that you type to download a file from FTP. So you see, if you want to use command FTP command, there's a few things you need to know. First, you need to know the Eagle server IP or the FTP server IP. Okay. After that, you also need to know about Linux or Windows command. Now, I'm sure most if you know about this, good for you. If you do not know about this command, don't worry. Just follow the lab manual and type it up. But Telnet is not secure. So for example here, I have three uh three guys here. Lah. So Awo, me here, trying to talk to my girlfriend in New York, Awo lover. So normally, uh, let's say I want to do remote login from Awo to Awo lover. So here I want to do a remote login. Okay. I just use a Telnet connections here. And then I just put in my password, username and password, like Cisco, Cisco. If it is authenticated, this guy will reply to me, okay. Once this happens, I can start to control the PC on our level on the other side, okay. The problem is that, let's say, someone hates you. So when I'm trying to do this telnet here, this, you see, when I'm doing telnet, what I'm actually sending is what you want. My password is Cisco, my username is Cisco. I'm actually sending my password and username. And this happened in plain text. Okay? Plain text means that you don't have any kind of security. You are not encrypting the packet. So this thing is sent as a plain text, meaning that anybody who gets this packet will be able to see the content of the packet. Okay? So let's say right now, this packet here that I'm trying to send, Cisco, Cisco, is being intercepted by somebody in the middle. Okay, so instead of going to the destination here, by right, I'm supposed to go to our level. Lah. Okay, now this thing doesn't happen, but instead, the hacker got it in the middle. 
so we call also call this a man in the middle attack. And when this happens, when the attacker have this attacker, he can actually open this attacker and then he see the content. Ha! Huh, your username and your password is Cisco Cisco. So you see, gone. People know your password. If this password you use, you share it with Facebook and Instagram, he can also go to your Instagram and your Facebook. So you see what happened now, ah? because your password is already known, this hacker can actually connect to our level using your password, Cisco, Cisco, because he already know your password. So in this case, ah, it, what happened is anybody in the middle who got, who intercept this hacker and who happened to find out the password, can do a remote login to our level and do something bad on our level. Okay, so this is not good for your level. That is Telnet. Okay. Now, in order to fix this, we will use SSH. So instead of using Telnet, we upgrade the security using SSH. Now, the same thing is going to happen. In the normal case, I can just do a SSH connection. Then here you say, okay. Once this happens, I can start to control our level from my side. No issues, lah, okay? That is the normal case. But again, you see, uh, we cannot trust anybody on the internet. So let's say if I'm trying to send my password here, Cisco, Cisco. This one, again, can be intercepted. So let's say this is not happening and this hacker is being intercepted again. Now, in this case, the deep of SSH is that this Cisco and Cisco, before I send it, I will encrypt it. So we will do an encryption here into something that uh, we call this a cipher tag. So plain text, when you encrypt this one, E stands for encrypt, you will get a cipher text. Okay, cipher text is something like uh, even you get it, you open it, you cannot open it without the key. So encryptions, you need to do this using a key. Okay, you will learn more about this in the security subject, but for now, just think of you need a key to put in the data before you send. So let me give you one example here. So let's say if I'm trying to send this thing over, okay, so this thing is my password. This is Cisco Cisco. In Telnet, this will happen. It is sent in plain text. Okay, now anybody who take this in the middle will get Cisco Cisco. will get to see what you are sending. But with SSH, we want to encrypt this. So before I send this thing, I want to put this thing into a box. And then I encrypt it with a key. Now I'm going to send this packet over. The data will be inside here. Okay, but what you see is just a box. You cannot see the content. Okay, and only the guy with the key can see the content. So I will send this over. When the receiver get this, because the receiver has the key, I can open this. Huh, this is the content. So in transit, it is safe, just like your Lazada packet. You buy something from Lazada, you have it in the box. Nobody knows what you're buying inside, right? So this is how SSH is more secure than Telnet. So let's say I want to send this one. I put it in, I encrypt this with SSH. I send this. Somebody in the middle stole it, okay? Now, let's say I'm the hacker. I stole this thing, okay? I cannot open this one, you know, because I don't have the key. Only the guy, the sender, and the receiver have the key. So I take this one. Also, no use one. I cannot open. I can only shake. Okay. So I cannot ever recover the content from the packet because I don't have the key. So that explains in this case, even the attacker here, when he got this packet here, without the key, he cannot see the content. So what he can see is probably something like this. Okay. But what is inside, I don't know. So in this case, we can say that SSH is more secure and tell that because even though somebody in the middle can steal your packet, steal it, they can steal. We cannot stop that from happening, but let them steal it because without the key, they cannot open it. So that is the difference between Telnet and SSH. Okay, so if you have already seen the lab one trailer, there's one section where I show you what is a remote login, okay? Remote login basically means uh, you want to configure something or you want to do something on a PC that is far away from your current location. So for example, right now I'm in Gampa campus, okay? So I'm teaching networking. And if anything goes wrong with the router or the network in Utah, sometimes they call me and then they ask me to help. Okay, just an example. So let's say I'm in Gampa right now. Then Sungalong cannot go online, internet down. 
they call me hey ang ang come come to sing along and help us to fix the router how can i do that if i drive from gampa to sing along three hours no lah actually my speed is one and a half hour but don't tell anyone so uh that will take me time then i have to come back here because tomorrow i have to stream another class so you see i have to travel at this uh, consume a lot of time now another way for me to fix a router that i don't have to go physically to sing along would be I use the remote login, meaning that from here, from the PC in Gamba campus, I connect inside the router in Sungai Long. That's why it is called remote login or remote location. Mark. Then after that, I can do anything I want. I can try to fix the router physically in Sungai Long, which is physically in Sungai Long. But right now, I'm doing so from Gamba campus. That is remote login. Okay. Another example is like. If you are using a Dell PC, you know Dell support is very good. This is not an app, but I just want to tell you Dell PC their support is very good. So, for example, now you know we are guy lah, so we like to browse to many different kind of website ah, which I cannot say here. And sometimes you want to clear the history, don't forget to clear the history. So, for example, today your girlfriend said, "Hey, I want to lend your laptop. I want to do assignment." So, wow, every guy panic mode, sweating. I want to clear all the history first. Then, ah, uh, after that, when you try to clear the history, click clear cannot clear. Wow! Well, after you click clear, the history is still there. Even panic, so double panic mode. Now, what you can do is you can call to Dell technical support, so they can help you. What they will do is they will go inside your PC. They will do something to help you to clear all the history that you don't want your girlfriend to see. Okay. So what is the support guy doing? Is he will. Get your PC IP address. He will do a remote login, and from his workplace, he get into your PC, control your PC, just like what you can do on Zoom, and then he can clear your browsing history. That is remote login. Okay. Now in this lab, what we want to try is we want to remote login to your Eager server. Of course, it's a bit weird because the Eager server is now in the same machine that you are running. Ah,、uh, you are trying to do this lab. So actually, why you want to remote login? It's the same PC. But try to think about this. If think about Eager Server is actually very far away. It is not in the same PC right now. Okay. So what we want to do next is I want to use Telnet and SSH to get inside to the PC, and then we can do something on the PC. Okay, the Eager Server. So there are two ways you do this. Ah,、uh, the way you do it is using Putty.exe. The Putty program is already given to you in the starter pack. Later on, what you need to do is you open up Putty. Now over here, you put in your Eager server IP. Okay, mine is two hundred or one two eight. This is just an example. You put in your own Eager server IP. Here you choose SSH. Now don't change anything else. Only two parameters are.、Huh? You only put the Eager server IP and then you put SSH. Now this thing here, what I'm, all the right thing that you see here, you don't have to worry about all these things. Okay, this one is I I have drawn this yesterday lah. So let me just remove this thing here. Okay, so using Putty, type your Eager Server IP and then you just press open. So what you are doing is you are trying to open a remote login connections. To the Eager server, so you will be asked about this. Just click yes, and then when you come to a login page, type in your password, username Cisco, password Cisco. Now, once you get past the login screen, you will see something like this, figure eight point three. So what is this? This means that congratulations, you are already inside the Eager server. Means that you can do anything that you will normally do on a PC. So what we are learn today, Telnet and SSH, they are both command based. So if you think that oh no no this is not my thing, I am not an expert in command. Don't worry. In some other lab, you will learn about VNC and Team Viewer. Those are also remote login, but that one you can use your mouse. We can because you can actually see the screen like Zoom. Zoom, I can also share my screen. Okay, so that is a UI version. Now, in some cases, if you cannot do your lab, I will use Zoom to go into your PC. I can fix it for you. That is remote login with UI. SSH and Telnet is remote login without UI.
Okay, you get it. So over here, uh, if you can see this screen later, congratulations, which means that you're already inside the Eagle server. That is what, that is the only thing that you need to do. You can skip the rest of the part here. Okay, now if that is working, I want you to try the same remote login again using a Telnet connection. So first you use SSH, second you use Telnet. Now Telnet and SSH, basically they do the same thing for you. It is for remote login, okay? Except that one main difference is Telnet is not secure, SSH is the secure version. I will explain to you in a minute what does it mean. But for now, I want you to try this first, okay? Now for exercise number nine, for Telnet, uh, you don't follow here. You don't have to type this one because some of your window machines does not support Telnet natively. So you might have to add services for that, but to make it simple, I need you to connect again later Telnet using Putty. Also, you use Putty. Here, same. Eagle server IP, the same IP. But over here, you choose Telnet. So later on, for exercise 9, you come here, you choose this one. Uh. Remember to change this to Telnet, not SSH, Telnet. And then you will see the number here change, okay? This number will change automatically to reflect the port number of the service. So later when you choose Telnet, you will see this one become 23 already. You don't have to type this up automatically. One. After this, you press open, the same thing will happen. And then the same thing, you go through the login page, you will see this. Okay, so you repeat exercise 8 and exercise 9. You will see hey, why am I doing the same thing. Correct, it is the same thing, but it is different in terms of security. So thank you, I hope that you have learned something new today and I'll see you again in the next lecture. Peace.